Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello viewers, welcome to this next lecture on the NPTEL MOOC course on Mathematical Portfolio Theory. Uh, you would recall that in the last lecture we had uh, started talking about the safety first criteria and we have done uh, one of the safety criteria, safety first criteria namely the Royce criteria uh, which involves the minimization of the uh, return of the portfolio uh, being less than or equal to certain predetermined threshold level. So, in today's class, we will continue our discussion on the safety first criteria and we will look at uh, two new criteria and we will discuss those in detail and illustrate that through uh, one example each uh, to further our discussion on non mean various portfolio theory. So, accordingly, we start this lecture uh, with the new safety cross criteria that is known as Kataokas. A safety first criteria. Uh, so, Kataoka in uh, 1963 developed a safety first criteria and uh, this involves uh, investors choosing the portfolio with an insured return RL as high as possible. subject that to the following constraint. So, uh, this means that they want to have as large as possible an RL subject to the following constraint and the constraint is the following that the probability that the portfolio return that means the portfolio that has been actively managed is no greater than the insured return must not exceed a pre determined level denoted alpha. So, uh, in other words, so let me be uh, offer a little bit of clarity in exactly how this translates to mathematically. So, in other words, the problem statement of Kataoka's safety first criteria is the following that you want to maximize R L subject to the following probability and the probability is that the probability that your R P being less than your R L is going to be less than or equal to some predetermined level denoted as alpha. Okay, so, I will explain this in, in a little more detail uh, as you move along. So, so let us try to reconcile this with the Royce criteria. So, like Royce criteria, 
the cataocus safety first criteria uh, can be analyzed from the paradigm of the mean variance approach provided the distribution of the returns can be characterized using only mean and variance. Okay, so, let us now introduce the notation. So, first of all let me talk about the notation R L. So, this is uh, used to define the insured or denote the insured level of return right? and uh, you have alpha uh, which is uh, predetermined. Uh, so, what you do is that we essentially look at uh, the return of the portfolios and suppose that you know it is of this form say it is normally distributed and I am considering that uh, this is normally distributed uh, for the sake of better clarity. Uh, so, here what we have, so it is on the x axis we have uh, R p, so this is going to be E of R p and we have a pre determined alpha and that is given by this shaded area and accordingly this value on the x axis is going to be denoted by R l. So, I can come back to my statement that here this R l level uh, is the insured level of return such that uh, below uh, which which the area is less than or equal to this alpha. All right. Okay. Uh, so, let me delve a little deeper into this. So, what we do is that now uh, we relate this uh, that means the Kataoka's safety first criteria to the traditional mean variance approach uh, so accordingly let us uh, consider the returns to be normally distributed Uh, so, we have already considered this in this figure that they are normally distributed. So, then what happens? Uh, accordingly, we can observe that. So, we are interested in the probability of uh, uh, the return of the portfolio being less than the insured level. We want this probability to be less than or equal to alpha. So, coming back to this normal distribution. So, this means that uh, R L. So, es essentially the insured level R is L is that level such that below which. So, beyond the, to the left of it the area under the curve is going to be less than or equal to alpha. Okay. So, now uh, this uh, coming back to this probability of R P less than uh, R L uh, is less than or equal to alpha. What does this mean? This means that now if I since I have assumed that uh, the returns are normally distributed that is your uh, R p is normally distributed. So, this condition then re, uh, reduces to R l minus E R p over sigma p 
is less than or equal to minus some uh, z alpha and which implies that so this is actually implies and implied by that r of l is less than or equal to e of r p. So, from here I get uh, uh, r l less than or equal to e r p minus a z alpha into sigma p. Now, I have of course, you know, I have already specified what r l uh, e r p and sigma p are, but I have not specified what is z alpha. So, let me just uh, specify what is z alpha. Uh, so, accordingly you note that z alpha is chosen such that probability of z greater than z alpha is equal to alpha. All right. uh, so, if you look at this uh, distribution and uh, you have this uh, area under the curve. So, so, this area if this is the area is alpha then uh, this is nothing but probability of uh, z greater than z alpha where this point is going to be equal to z alpha and accordingly uh, symmetrically this point here is going to be minus z alpha. So, that is the reason why we take this uh, r p uh, uh, minus r l we can use this expression and this is going to be less than or equal to minus z alpha. All right. so, so, this is the definition of what is going to be my z alpha. Now, uh, since uh, the investors uh, want to reach the insured level of return at the maximum level, right? Remember, R L is less than or equal to this. So, they want to obviously, you know, they want to have the insured level of return to be maximum possible and since this, this is the, we have the upper bound of that. So, therefore, from the investor's point of view, the insured level of return R L is going to be the upper bound E of R P minus Z alpha into sigma of P. All right. So, now, now let us look at this through an example. Uh, so, we recall the table uh, where we had this portfolios A, B, C and D and you remember that uh, the expected return E R P was. So, this is the table I had uh, introduced in the last class. So, for A the expected return is 12 percent, for B it is 10 percent, for C it is 15 percent and for D this is 10 percent. Uh, and the corresponding standard deviation sigma p is going to be 9 percent, 4 percent, 10 percent and 8 percent. So, uh, now what you do is uh, we assume that and again this is for the illustrative purpose uh, and this argument can be extended to any distribution uh, that can be specified using mean and variance. So, assume that the returns on the portfolio are normally distributed. Okay. So, now uh, let the predetermined level of alpha be 5 percent. Uh, so, this means that uh, you want to find uh, your R L to be as large as possible while at the same time uh, ensuring that uh, probability of uh, your return of the portfolio being less than this uh, level R L, this should be uh, obviously less than or equal to just 5 percent. Okay, uh, so now we have uh, we have set up this example uh, with these four portfolios, and I've specified what is going to be my predetermined level of alpha. So now what you can do, uh, so accordingly, uh, I want to pose the following question: Is that uh, amongst these four portfolio A, B, and C, and D, which of the portfolios A, B, C, and D? Uh, would be the most desirable 
to an investor who is using uh, the Kataukas uh, safety first criteria. So, let us try to answer this question. So, uh, let us revisit the constraint. So, remember that we have to maximize R L subject to this constraint. So, accordingly the constraint is given by probability of R p less than R L uh, less than or equal to alpha implies and implied by a uh, probability of z less than or equal to R L minus E R p over sigma p. Right? Uh, since R p is normally distributed, so obviously R p minus C R p over sigma p is normally distributed and I want this to be less than or equal to alpha. Now, uh, since uh, alpha equal to 5 percent, right? so uh, the abscissa value or the x axis value, value for n 0 1 distribution is given by what? This is equal to minus 1.645 and this is going to be equal to the R L minus E R P over sigma p. Uh, so, therefore, the insured level of return. So, from this uh, relation we can get the insured level of return is given by the relation. So, from here I get R L is equal to E R P plus uh, 1 min minus of 1.645 into sigma p. All right. So, now uh, for uh, portfolios A, B, C and D, what do we have? We will have, uh, we need to calculate what is R L A, R L B, R L C and R L D. So, what are these going to be? These are going to be E of R p. So, what are the E of R p? So, you go back to the original table, the E of R p is what 12 percent, 10 percent, 15 percent and 10 percent. Okay. So, we will write those values here. So, this is going to be 12, 10, 15 and 10. And then uh, we have uh, sigma p. So, what are the sigma p values? The so sigma p values are going to be 9, 4, 10 and 8. So, this is going to be 9, 4, 10 and 8. So, I have substituted the ERP and the sigma p value and then I multiply this with minus 1.645. So, uh, each of those terms uh, I factor in the minus 1.645. So, this was actually obtained from the uh, this value of minus 1.645 was obtained from uh, the table for standard normal distribution. So, this effectively turns out to be minus 2.805 percent. This is uh, 3.42 percent. This is minus 1.45 percent and this is minus 3.16 percent. All right. So, then uh, so that means what? So, that means that uh, uh, since all of them uh, we consider the identical loss of probabilities. So, at the identical level of loss probability of alpha equal to 5 percent and I am considering they are identical because I have minus 1.645 uh, in all the cases. The lowest possible Uh, acceptable returns returns for a b c d are minus 2.805 percent 3.42 percent minus 1.45 percent and minus 
3.16 percent. Uh, so, uh, thus we can conclude that the desirability of the portfolios are in the following order. So, first I will have B because this is the highest value. Then next I will have C uh, which is minus 1.45 percent. Then I will have A which is uh, minus 2.805 percent and then finally we have uh, uh, D which is minus 3.16 percent. So that means I am basically choosing uh, in terms of starting with the highest uh, the return that we uh, the highest RL that we get ensured level of return uh, and, and coming down all the way to the lowest value which is minus 3.16 percent. Okay, now, let us see how does this turn out to be graphically. So, so graphically one can view this like that. Uh, so, suppose now I have this relation. So, with alpha equal to 5 percent I have the relation E of RP is equal to RL uh, plus 1.5 six four five sigma p all right so uh, remember here what did we have we had rl equal to erp minus 1.645 sigma p so i'll write now e of rp in terms of rl and sigma p on both the sides or, or on the same side so what are this these are nothing but you know these are uh, some straight lines with identical slopes in the uh, sigma p erp plane so if we take the sigma p erp plane so these are going to be the some straight lines and then what we have is we have the efficient frontier. So, what we have is now that uh, suppose we call, call this uh, this portfolio say E F G H. So, all these portfolios have an identical uh, uh, the slope of 1.645, but uh, the R L which is the intercept that is going to be highest in case of this portfolio E because this has got the highest intercept. And this is just the manifestation of the uh, a graphical representation of the Kataoka's uh, safety first criteria. Okay, so, ju just to sort of elaborate on this, so we just write that uh, we have parallel uh, straight lines through portfolios E F G H in the uh, sigma p E R p plane. So, uh, note the following that uh, the first thing you note that they have the same slope of uh, 1.645, but they have a different intercepts. And the punch line is that uh, as I have explained just now, the most uh, desirable portfolio is the one with the highest intercept, uh, namely that is portfolio E, which is the largest intercept amongst all the four portfolios. All right. So, now that uh, we have uh, done this uh, Kataoki's and Roy's criteria, so we are to we want to now contrast uh, Roy's criteria with Kataoka's criteria and we make the following observation. Uh, first of all, remember that Roy's criteria it favors portfolios with the greatest slope 
but fixed intercept. So, recall this from the previous class and from the discussion that uh, we have completed just now, the Kataokas criteria uh, gives precedence to portfolios with greatest intercept but fixed slope. So, in case of Roy's criteria, if you have sigma p ERP, you have a fixed intercept, but you will pick up the portfolio that has the uh, highest slope. So, you get a slope but the intercept is fixed. So, this is the crux of the Royce criteria. However, in case of the Kataokas criteria, uh, if we look at the sigma p ERP plane as we have seen just now, you will have a fixed slope. So, that means, you will have identical slope and then you will pick the one with the uh, greatest intercept namely this one. So, here the slope is fixed, uh, so here the intercept is fixed and here the uh, slope is fixed. So, you basically pick up the one with the higher slope and here you pick the one with the uh, greatest intercept. So, that is the primary contrast between the Royce and the Kataokas criteria. Okay, so, let us now come to the last of the three criteria and that is uh, Telser safety first criteria. So, uh, Telser in 1955 uh, proposed this criteria uh, which is based on uh, the assumption that the rational investors maximize. So, it brings us to again the, uh, the basic uh, uh, motivation for rational investors that uh, they want to maximize the expected return, but since it is a safety first criteria, so they will maximize the expected return subject to the constraint uh, that the return being less than or equal to a pre specified minimum level. Uh, which will denote by as before R L has the probability. Uh, so, to dismiss that this is the uh, probability of return being less than or equal to the uh, pre specified level of R L. This probability will not exceed a given probability. So, it may, so, mathematically how do I uh, present this? So, uh, the criteria is represented as maximize E of R p. Now, what do we want? We want to maximize the expected return, but we need the condition that subject to the probability that the return R p of the portfolio being less than uh, R less than or equal to R l that means, this probability uh, of the portfolio being less than or equal to R l this is does not exceed some predefined given probability of alpha. Uh, so, here uh, note that first of all you are uh, you have a pre specified minimum level. So, here your R L is pre specified 
and uh, it will not exceed a given probability. So, this indicates that uh, alpha is also pre specified. Okay, now, let us uh, you know as we have done in the other two cases. So, we focus on a situation that if r follows a normal distribution uh, that r p that means the return of the portfolio it follows a normal distribution, then what happens? Then we have, uh, so what do we need? The constraint is probability that return of the portfolio r p less than or equal to n. This must be less than or is less than or equal to pre specified r subscript l. This being less than or equal to a pre specified level alpha, this implies that uh, you have R L being less than or equal to E R P minus Z alpha sigma P, which implies that E R P is greater than or equal to Z L, uh, sorry, the greater than or equal to R L uh, plus Z alpha into sigma P. Now, if you are if alpha uh, is equal to 5 percent then uh, in particular for this alpha what we have is E R P is greater than or equal to R L plus 1.645 sigma P. Uh, so, accordingly once I have this condition, uh, so we can make that accordingly the portfolios which satisfy this constraint the most so amongst the portfolio which satisfy this constraint the most desirable in uh, accordance or as driven by the Telser's criteria is the one which has the largest expected return. Uh, so, this means that uh, basically you want to you want to have this Telser criteria being satisfied and once this is satisfied your goal is essentially to maximize this E of R P. So, amongst all those portfolios which satisfy this criteria, the most desirable one is the one which has the highest E R P because eventually according to the criteria your goal is to maximize the E R P. Okay, so, now uh, we consider uh, the example again that we have uh, seen earlier. Now, since in this case I need to pre specify my R L and alpha, so I take my R L to be equal to say minus 2 percent and alpha equal to 5 percent. So, that corresponds to 1.645. So, then what is going to be the E R uh, P in all these cases? All right. So, for portfolio A, B, uh, C and D. So, you have these four portfolios. So, what is going to be the E R P? So, accordingly for the first portfolio, so we will uh, enumerate the E R A, E R B, E R C and E R D. Uh, all this will be greater than or equal to uh, what did we have? The condition was we had greater than or equal to R L plus 1.645 sigma p. So, uh, E of R p is greater than or equal to R L plus 1.645 sigma p. So, what is the R L? So, R L I have already specified is going to be uh, minus 2 percent. So, this is pre specified. Uh, so, accordingly this is going to be minus 2 percent. Uh, let me put it minus 2 minus 2 minus 2 minus 2 uh, plus 1.645 plus 1.645 plus 1.645 plus 1.645 uh, and into sigma p. So, the sigmas were 9 percent, uh, 4 percent, uh, 10 percent and 8 percent. So, in this case this turns out to be equal to 12.81 percent. In the second case, this turns out to be equal to 4.58 percent. In the third case, this turns out to be equal to 14.45 uh, percent and uh, we have uh, the last one to be 11.16 percent. 
Now, according to the table, E of R A is 12 percent, uh, E of R B is 10 percent, E of R C is 15 percent and E of R D is 10 percent. So, now observe very carefully, uh, 12 percent uh, is not greater than or equal to 12.81 percent and uh, 10 percent is not greater than or equal to 11.16 percent, but 10 percent here is greater than 4.58 percent and 15 percent here is greater than 14.45 percent. So, that even before we can start maximizing the E of RP, we have to check the situations where uh, the uh, Telsus criteria is not satisfied. So, it turns out to be that, that it is not satisfied in case of A and it is not satisfied in case of D. Uh, so, accordingly, where we state that uh, here A and D do not satisfy the Telsers criteria but B and C do uh, satisfy the Telsers criteria. So, now basically we have to choose one amongst B and C. Now, uh, since among B and C C has, so it is a 15 percent return which is higher than 10 percent, C has the highest or, or in this case higher expected return. Therefore, C is the most uh, desirable portfolio in the paradigm of Telsers safety first criteria. Uh, so, graphically uh, you can see that, uh, so let us look at uh, Telsers uh, safety first criteria. without the risk free asset. So, that means, since there is no risk free asset, so the efficient frontier uh, would look like this. Uh, in the sigma p ERP plane and then uh, we have this R L and so basically the line that ERP is equal to RL plus 1.645 sigma p. So, this region uh, is the region where ERP is going to be greater than or equal to RL plus 1.645 sigma p and this line. So, on the top I have the efficient frontier and this line is what is known as the Telser ray. All right. Uh, so, if we have uh, some portfolio Q, R, P and there is some portfolio S. So, uh, basically what happens is that uh, we have the efficient frontier and once we set that bring the Telser ray into the picture, we figure out that S does not satisfy the Telser uh, criteria and then only Q, R and P satisfies the Telsar criteria and so you have to the most desirable portfolio amongst Q, R, P is the one that has the highest expected return namely uh, P. So, we can now summarize this as uh, we consider the Telsar's safety first criteria. In the paradigm of the mean variance approach uh, assuming of course uh, that 
the returns are normally distributed and no risk free asset exists. Uh, so, uh, I can now make the following statement in the context of uh, this uh, picture that we have here. I can make the following statement that the portfolios uh, satisfying the constraint given by the Telsus criteria that must lie in the shaded area. Right? Uh, the reason I say that it must lie in the shaded area because the shade this entire area will give the opportunity set or feasible set. And amongst those, you can only choose the ones that lie above this Telsar ray. So, that means that uh, you can only uh, consider those which are lying in the shaded area as given. So, since the portfolios they are satisfying the constraint, this must lie on the shaded area, and uh, this shaded area is between uh, the constraint and the opportunity set. And so, consequently, the most desirable portfolio uh, is the one with the greatest expected return among the portfolios in the shaded region. Uh, so, that means that you know the, the portfolio is in the shaded region. Uh, so, this means that uh, the portfolio is in the shaded region are the ones who satisfy uh, the Telsar's constraint and once you have uh, the collection of all the portfolios that satisfy the Telsar constraint, you then have to uh, look at the objective of the Telsar's criteria. Uh, which is maximization of the expected return. So, amongst those which are lying in the shaded region, uh, the most desirable portfolio is going to be the one which has the highest expected return. So, accordingly, if you go back to the figure, uh, you will you'll notice that uh, this, this is going to be uh, the portfolio. So, uh, you would recall that in that case, uh, this is going to be this. Uh, so, this is going to be the portfolio P which lies at the all right. So, to conclude this, uh, we now consider the existence of the risk free asset, asset. Uh, so, in this case, what you will have is we will have uh, again you look at sigma p e r p plane. Now, since we have considered now the existence of the risk free asset. So, that means the efficient frontier now is going to be no longer the previous one, but rather the CML emanating from RF and then the Telsar's ray would be going to be uh, given by. So, this is Telsar's ray, uh, which is basically given by E of RP this region, this is greater than or equal to RL plus Z alpha sigma p. Uh, so, that means the region above the Telsar ray, but below the CML, uh, this is going to be my new shaded region. So, uh, therefore, I can say that the shaded area uh, represents the intersection of the set satisfying the constraint uh, that means uh, anything that is lying above this Telsar ray and the set uh, and the uh, opportunity set. So, it is the intersection of uh, the region above the Telsar ray and the opportunity set and this intersection is given by this shaded region. All right. So, suppose that we have the, uh, the portfolio, suppose that 
uh, what we have now is we now have basically uh, this shaded region and suppose I choose that uh, we find that this portfolio. So, there is some portfolio Q not to be confused with the Q in the previous uh, diagram. So, suppose that Q is the portfolio. So, I denote by Q the portfolio with the greatest expected return. And what is this going to be? The portfolio, the greatest expected return is going to be on the point of intersection. So, amongst all the portfolios here, the one with the greatest return is going to lie here. So, this portfolio with the greatest expected return, uh, which is at the intersection of the Telser ray and the CML. So, I have so here I identify this with K. So, uh, we make this observation. Now, we say that now what so accordingly if I identify this with Q. So, this may then you have to then now since this lies on the Telser ray. So, obviously, it will satisfy the Telser relation of ERP is equal to RL plus Z alpha sigma P. So, accordingly I can write this as uh, ERQ from this relation equal to RL so from this relation equal to RL plus Z alpha sigma P. So, is equal to uh, uh, is equal to RL plus Z alpha. So, instead of sigma P we now have sigma Q. Uh, so, this can be written as R L is equal to E R Q minus Z alpha of sigma Q. Now, also remember that uh, C Q not only lies on the Telser ray, which is why this condition is satisfied, but also since uh, Q is on the C M L, it has weights uh, as a combination of W m on m. So, remember that a, any portfolio in the C m l can be obtained as a combination of the uh, market portfolio. Uh, so, let us say that the weight of the market portfolio is W m and 1 minus W m on uh, the risk free asset. So, then what do we have? Then you will have R l is equal to expected value of R q uh, minus uh, Z alpha sigma Q. Now, since Q is on the C M L, so that means R Q is simply going to be W M R M plus 1 minus W M R F. So, the expected value of R Q accordingly from here, this is going to be W M E of R M plus 1 minus W M into R F. So, this term is taken care of minus Z alpha. And so, here uh, sigma q is simply going to be uh, the standard deviation of this term because uh, this term will vanish and the cross term is going to vanish. So, z alpha into sigma q is simply going to be w m into sigma m. And therefore, what we have is that, so this will imply that uh, w m is equal to r l minus r f is equal to E uh, over E R M minus R F minus Z alpha of sigma M. All right. Uh, so, this brings us to the end of today's lecture. So, just to do a recap of what we have done. So, we, we picked up from where you left up in the last lecture uh, and uh, uh, where we had done the Royce criteria and we uh, introduced the Katawakis criteria and we compared both of them. Uh, so, in case of Royce criteria, the intercept was fixed and then we the most desirable portfolio was going to be the one which is the highest slope. And in case of the Katawakis criteria, the slopes were fixed and then amongst the different portfolios with identical slopes, you ended up picking the most desirable portfolio as the one which has the uh, highest intercept. And then we talked about the race criteria uh, which sought to maximize the expected return uh, given a certain constraint which was given by the relation ERP is greater than equal to RL plus Z alpha into sigma P. And so, where uh, the, uh, the probability that uh, your return of the portfolio, so it is equivalent to the portfolio of the return probability of the return of your portfolio being uh, less than some predefined criteria RL and you could not let that probability fall below uh, in alpha beyond a certain level. 
And uh, we looked at the, the graphical illustration of uh, both these criteria that we discussed together in the context of uh, assuming that the returns are normally distributed, which can be extended to uh, returns of the, uh, uh, the distribution of the returns being uh, not only just normally distributed, but also it could be a, any other distribution that relies only on the mean and variance. And then we also looked at uh, a graphical representation of uh, the Telser's criteria uh, once you know uh, in the case uh, where we had the Markowitz framework without any risk free asset and then in the context of the capital market line when uh, a risk free uh, so in the first case no risk free asset was included it was only risky assets and in the second case in case of the capital market line we implemented the Telser's criteria uh, and uh, this had to be done in the uh, context of the capital market line. Uh, so, this concludes our discussion on uh, the safety first criteria, which was the one of the first topics uh, that we, we, we had talked, uh, we had uh, dwelled upon when we started our discussion on the new non mean variance framework. And then uh, in the next class onwards, we will continue our discussion uh, on other non mean variance approaches in order to optimize our portfolio. Thank you for watching.